Hi, and welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. Today, we're going to be taking a look at what's new in DaVinci Resolve 15.2. So stay right there. All right, folks. Today is big, 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 big. Uh, it's the release of DaVinci Resolve 15.2. And this is a major update. Uh, it, it reminds me of going from 12 to 12.5. There's over 30 new features, tons of performance improvements, lots of things. So we're going to try and go through it here and see all the different things that, um, you know, we can get through and, and talk about. Uh, number one, uh, improvements to the speed of the timeline. It's, it's much faster. It's much more responsive. It's really going to make editing a lot smoother and a lot more enjoyable for a lot of people. So that's that's really a biggie. Another biggie is the uh, keyboard customization. Before, you used to have to go into preferences and then user and then keyboard customization. Now it's right there under the resolve menu. It's a new graphical interface. So I can hit different options, command, shift, space, and see what keys are in use very, very easily to figure out what, you know, what keys I can actually command or uh, assign to something. So if you want to really customize your keyboard and this is just gonna be such a, a great way of doing it. I'm very excited about this new uh, keyboard customization. Another thing that I think is super cool is let's go into preferences here and where is uh, project load and save. So we've had live save now for a while. The downside to live save is if you started a new project and you start going to town on it, it doesn't start doing the live save until you've actually saved it once. Well, now in 15.2, everything is automatically saved. You don't have to do that initial step. So some of us who have lost footage before now aren't going to have to worry about that because it starts auto-saving immediately. So I think that is very, very big. Another very cool feature is this this, these new lines, these real subtle red lines that are in here, they tell you what part of the interface you're in. So if you click on different sections, you'll see a little red line there. This is very, very handy to let you know what section is in focus at the time. So I think that will, uh, it may speed things up, it may not. I mean, I haven't really had a problem with knowing what sections were or what section of the interface was active at the time but every once in a while you know when you're working with multiple windows and things it, it can happen so i think this is going to be a nice big improvement because it's just so subtle that you really don't notice it but if you need it it's there so i think this is another big win okay something else that i want to show is we'll just do a handful of quick edits here um do a trim pull some stuff over. And now if we go up to the edit menu and go to undo, there's a new history. So this is really cool to be able to step back through time and see what changes that you made. So, and you can just undo a particular action that you did. So I think that is really neat. I mean, there's not too many other apps that, that have something like that. And I think this was a, a brilliant idea because every once in a while you, you get ahead of yourself and then your command Z, command Z, command Z to go back. Now I can just go, oh, what did I do? Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. And I can step back in time and figure out what it was that I actually did. Another really cool feature. I, I think almost all of these are really cool features. So uh, just excuse me for getting a little excited here. Every once in a while, you're putting stuff together, especially with B-roll, and you want to think, okay, have I duplicated any shots in my footage? You know, did I really mess up and, and put something else? So you can go up to the view menu and select show duplicate frames. 
So I can see right here where I've got duplicate frames and know, okay, well, I need to, I may need to fix that and go back to what I was doing. I think that's uh, going to be really, really handy when you're working on complicated shots and things that have a lot of B-roll. You want to make sure that you don't duplicate that. So another feature that kind of goes along with that or in the same vein is the ability to get rid of unused clips. Uh, th this just will help clean up your timeline and keep things a lot smoother. So here I've got an unused clip right here in the middle here. So if I go up to timeline, say clean up video tracks and say flatten unused clips, this says it was cleaned up successfully and it just removed that item. That I think is another very cool feature for Blackmagic to put in that helps keep our timelines a lot cleaner. Okay, if we take a look at the thumbnail viewer, we now can see what parts of a clip are selected. That's the vertical white line. So if I go over to one of these and see, I can see that my in and out points, but I can also see what parts have been used. This is something we have wanted for a long, long time. So let's take a clip here and I'll just pull this. I don't, want to, I don't want to do it that way. Let's do it like this. We'll go in and out. We'll add it to the end. In and out. We'll add it to the end and in and out add it to the end. So now if I look at this particular thumbnail, I can see that I used three segments of that particular clip in my project. Super handy for knowing what you've used. I, I've been waiting for something like this for a long, long time. Okay, I'm going to get rid of uh, a couple things here. And if we come over to the three dots here, we have a dual pane media pool now. So I can actually be in two different bins at a time. That, and then again, another super cool feature to be able to have multiple bins going. Um, I know this is something that I'm going to use quite a bit because I can pull from different bins without having to navigate through them. I, this is going to be a, a really, really big time saver for a lot of people. Another really cool new plugin is the beauty plugin. So I'm going to come over here, drop my face in here, go to the color tab and here under resolve effects refine, we have beauty. So I'm going to drop that in place there and it kind of overdoes it on this particular shot. So I'm going to tone that down. Let me turn it all the way down so you can kind of see the difference. I'm going to just gradually bring it up without going to where it looks like it's out of focus. Then we have diffuse lighting and man, I look, I look 10 years younger. Isn't that amazing? Uh, we can add texture, delete texture. So depending on how you want that to look, you can really, uh, uh, you know, really change the look of somebody's face and make them look rougher, gruffer, or smoother, you know, prettier, whatever you want to do. I think this is, uh, this is really going to be cool for sh when working with different people and trying to just fine tune their look a little bit. Okay. Let's jump over to Fairlight. I don't do a lot of stuff in Fairlight. So, um, uh, there are five or six new things in Fairlight, a new stereo fixer, but I'm going to go to the effects library and pull up the new multi-band compressor. This, um, this is something I think is, is going to be really good for me because I, I often want to use compression and fine tune my audio, but the compressor just was kind of so, so now you have four bands of compression, uh, a lot of control over each band. So you can really, really dial in where you want things to be. So I think the, for a lot of audio guys, the new multiband compressor is going to be a hot new feature. So like I said, there's a lot of new things, about 30 new features, tons of bug fixes, tons of performance improvements, a lot of stuff to really, really like 
about Resolve 15.2. So absolutely download it, get working on it. You're going to find a lot of things that are really going to make your life easier. My biggest ones are the improvement in the timeline speed, being able to see my in and out points in my clips, being able to see what clips have been used and what segments of those clips have been used, being able to find duplicates and being able to compress the timeline to get rid of unused frames, a lot of stuff. I, I don't think I've seen this big of an improvement since 12 to 12.5. Thanks, Blackmagic. You guys are absolutely killing it with features and improvements. So that's it for Resolve 15.2, what's new? There's more information on the Blackmagic Design website. So check it out. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.